Hello and welcome to Knowledge Spits. In this video, we're going to help you understand how co-immunoprecipitations work. But first. It is critically important that we understand how antibodies can be modified to be used as a tool that allows scientists to visualize proteins of interest. Antibodies are used in a variety of molecular techniques, such as ELISA, Western blots, CoIP, many histological stainings. So the primary reason that we use antibodies is because they have a unique ability and it can be used in a variety of techniques because they have two regions, one region that stays constant throughout the class and another portion that can be engineered to recognize whatever protein of interest we want. Imagine that you're interested in protein A. How can you perform experiments solely on protein A? Well, you can use an antibody that will only detect protein A because the variable region has been modified to recognize only one protein. Great, now you have protein A bound to the primary antibody. You then have to use a special secondary antibody, but this one is special. This secondary antibody has a particular molecule attached to its constant region that once the molecule is exposed to a specific chemical or light wave, it will release a specific signal that microscopes can detect. The secondary antibodies are designed so that they can only bind to the primary antibody's constant region. For example, if the first antibody was created inside of a rabbit, literally, they eject the protein of interest into the animal and extract the antibody from the animals. Literally, they inject the protein of interest into the animal and extract the antibody the animal's immune response created. And second, antibody has to be an anti-rabbit. The second antibody has to be an anti-rabbit antibody. I don't want to be the dead horse, but this is important so the assays are clear. So, what is the fundamental purpose of CoIP? What if you knew the identity of protein A, but you were interested in understanding what other proteins can bind and interact with protein A? Well, CoIP is the perfect assay. You first start with the lysate that contains all of the proteins that were inside of the cell. Note, the proteins interact. Note, the protein interactions are still occurring inside the centrifuge tube, so if protein B and C are binded to protein A in the cell, they will still be binded in the solution. You first add the antibody that will recognize protein A because we know the identity of that protein and we can have a specific antibody recognize it. You then have to add a secondary antibody that will only recognize the primary antibody's constant region. You then add a bead which will not dissolve in the solution. It's typically an agros or a magnetic beads. This bead recognizes the secondary antibody's constant region. So now what do we have in solution? We have the primary antibody bound to protein A. We have whatever protein is bounded to protein A as well, which we don't know the identity of. We have the secondary antibody bounded to the first antibody. We have the bead bound to the red secondary antibody. And we have the rest of the unbounded proteins floating in solution. The purpose of the bead is to make the bound complex much heavier. You place your centrifuge tube in a machine called the centrifuge, which spins the tube very fast. The centripetal force will cause the heavier objects to sink to the bottom of the tube, and since the resin will not dissolve, you'll form a solid pellet. The solution or liquid can then be extracted with a pipette, and you have successfully isolated protein A and whatever protein is bound to it. To separate the antibodies and the different proteins from each other, typically heat and washing is applied. For further categorization of the proteins that were separated, you can perform Western blot or mass spec if you need the identity of the unknown bound proteins. If you're not confident with Western blots, we made a video that will be down in the description. Take a second to pause the video and now explain the process out loud and see if you understand it yourself. Now you may be asking, what about IP? What makes CoIP different than IP? Immunoprecipitation. The mechanism is exactly the same, but the question that you're asking is different. In CoIP, the question you're asking is, what proteins are bound to protein A? and you want to isolate all bound proteins to A. In IP, you're only interested in separating one specific protein. Therefore, you're only going to precipitate out protein A using antibodies. In literature, oftentimes you'll read, we then pulled down protein A, which literally means they used a bead and the antibodies to literally pull down the protein to the bottom of the centrifuge tube. If you made it to the end of the video and enjoyed the explanation, let us know by liking and subscribing. If you have any technique that you would like us to cover, let us know in the comments. If you have questions about the process, we read and will respond to any comment. Thank you very much. Until next time.